And speaking of elections, we actually have some election news of somebody else jumping into a different election, and that is, of course, Barry Moore, who has stepped into the second district race. Now, Barry Moore is somebody that I've interviewed, I think, at least twice. He's been a representative in the House, really sharp guy at State House, of course, in Al in Montgomery, in Alabama, not at the national level, which he's running for now. Uh, Barry Moore's a, a good dude. Um, I, I think that he has a, a fairly conservative voting record. It's not the most conservative. I mean, he's not like an uber, uber conservative. But, you know, as, as far as the principles of limiting spending, small government, his record is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's it's decent. And when you compare that to uh, everything else here, and then you compare that to the other people that he would be running against, Frankly, I probably vote for Barry Moore if the election were held today. Now, that's a long time off. I have not made my mind up yet who I'm going to vote for for District 2, and, and you guys know me. I like to wait until the absolute last minute to actually make that decision. But, you know, if, if you're asking me right now, who do you vote for in that race, and I am a District 2 voter, I probably pull the lever for Barry Moore. Because there is absolutely no way, no way in Hades I am voting for Troy King. I, I, I'm not kidding here, and I know that uh, I'm a guy that tends to go third party. You guys know that. 100% cards on the table. I'd vote for a Democrat before I'd vote for Troy King. Of course, Troy King is a Democrat, so that's kind of a I mean, I know he's a Republican technically, but um, he's been a Democrat before. He's always done whatever he thought was necessary to obtain power. Troy King's one of the most corrupt officials in the history of the state of Alabama. And yes, I am stacking him up against people like Bentley. I'm stacking him up against other governors that we've had in the past. Don Siegelman, guys like that. Looking at him compared to those guys, what Troy King did was actually far worse than what Governor Bentley did. From a violating the public trust standpoint, from a corruption standpoint, I think that you know, he and Mike Hubbard would be basically neck and neck, but the difference is Troy King got away with it for a lot longer. But anyway, that that kind of gives you a summary of where I am on him. And with Jessica Taylor, and by the way, I have reached out to Jessica Taylor multiple times through multiple venues. She has yet to get back with me. She has expressed absolutely no interest in talking to me whatsoever. I'm going to try to get an interview with her, but so far... She has not been very open to having a conversation with media personalities. I don't know if she's hitting the pavement. I don't know if she's going out and campaigning much. I haven't really seen anything about it in the news. But right now, Jessica Taylor, I, I see her kind of hiding. Now, I've seen some of her political ads, and I've seen some of her talking points and been to her website. Here's what I'll say about her. She talks a good game. And that's, it. that's good. That's important. But I want you to remember this. Martha Roby also talked a good game. When Martha Roby was originally elected, one of the things that she talked about was being more conservative. When she took down Bobby Bright, she wanted to do all these things like repeal Obamacare and uh, limit government spending, rein in the national debt. I mean, she talked like she was going to be a Mo Brooks or a Louis Gohmert, somebody of that caliber in the representative, the House of Representatives for Alabama. And when I first heard about her, I was a big Martha Roby supporter. And to show you how far I've come in that, when Martha Roby announced she was no longer seeking re-election in District 2, I literally threw a party on air. I had my background back here changed to a big banner that said, uh, Buy Martha. I set off a confetti bomb, which by the way, I kid you not, I'm still digging confetti out of furniture here in the Situation Room. But anyway... Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, it's safe to say that I really don't like Martha Roby. And what it all boils down to is she talked like a conservative, spoke as though she wanted to be a conservative and spoke as though she was going to be something the people of Alabama could trust to bring their conservative values to Washington and represent them. And then, yeah, she, she actually votes with the Democrats about half the time. And on top of that, if you're looking at her rating from places like Conservative Review, Freedom Works, the Heritage Foundation, all conservative think tanks, 
every single one of them had her at a lower rating than the Democrat that she replaced, Bobby Bright. I mean, she was failing in every conceivable rubric that you could measure. She was getting no, I, I think it was like, the highest score that she got on one of them was a, a 56, 57, something like that. So by every rubric, by every standard that, that does these things and evaluates Congress people's votes, she was failing on every level. I, I mean, she was, other than Terry Sewell, the only Democrat in the Alabama delegation, she had a worse freedom score than all of them. It wasn't even close. And so the reason that I'm skeptical of Jessica Taylor is not that I don't think that she, she seems like a, a, a nice conservative lady, and I have no reason to assume that she's going to pull a Martha Roby on us, but if I have to pick between somebody like Barry Moore that has a voting record that I can actually look at, I know what I'm getting when I look at a Barry Moore, versus somebody that's never held office, doesn't have an official voting record, by the way, much like Martha Roby when she first got into this. I I'm not trying to be prejudiced against people that haven't run for office before, but I'm just looking at that and I smell trouble. I think that she could be very similar to a Martha Roby who talks a really good game, talks about how conservative that she's going to be, and then gets up in Washington and does the exact opposite. And I'll say this when it comes to her media relations. At least Martha Roby communicated with the media before she got elected. Now, granted, the second that she won election, she cut us off and never spoke to us again. I mean, I reached out to her campaign I don't know how many times, and Martha Roby never wanted to come on my show. All she wanted to do was buy ads so that you could hear her in a pre-recorded message as opposed to talking directly to you, the listener and the voter, the constituent in the state of Alabama. But Jessica Taylor's starting out that way. She doesn't even want to talk to us now. That makes me suspicious. It's almost like she doesn't really know what she believes yet. Maybe I'm completely wrong. And by the way, Jessica Taylor, feel free to come on my show anytime. You have a standing invitation. I'll be happy to have you on. I want to have that conversation. And I, I'm not going to, you know, sandbag you. That, that's not what I'm about. You can ask even people that disagree with me, Democrats that come on this program, that I don't do that to people. And if it comes between her and Troy King, if Barry Moore drops out for some reason, oh yeah, you better believe I'll vote for her for uh, Troy King because I'd, I'd rather take a gamble on somebody that at least talks a good game and talks like a conservative but has no record to back it up over somebody like Troy King that has a very clear record of doing the exact opposite of that. So I'm definitely open to having my mind changed. There's a lot of time between now and the Republican primary. And I am more than willing to hear Ms. Taylor or any other candidates out. But right now, if you ask me who I was voting for in this election, I would have to go with Barry Moore. I think that he'd be the right man for the job, at least out of the, the people that I have seen thus far. I'm not opposed to voting for De Jessica Taylor. I would definitely consider it. It's not as though she has an unwinnable vote for me. It's just she she's going to have to do some very serious convincing that she's not all talk. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.